Welcome to Creating Grin, where a group of us, that's right, a group of us, sit around the yield table playing Dungeons & Dragon, our favorite pastime, as stated a couple episodes back. My name is Eric, and I will be your Dungeon Master, as always, for this chapter of our tale, playing in the homebrew world of Alteratus, customized by myself, are the players. And to my right, we have... I'm Katie, playing Ari Arcalis, a tiefling rogue who... Oh, I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Brian, playing Calbrix Goldfound, a human war cleric. Mm. And he's unsure of if he made a good deal or not. Time will tell. Yes. I'm Jason, playing Gora Thunderfist, a Goliath fighter. And I am just confused right now, and I don't like rocks anymore. <laughs> So last we left off, things had happened, as stated before. Cillian finally won his long battle to persuade over Kelbrix to the good side, depending on how you look at it. Uh, monsters of stone were slain. Uh, people had nearly died and brought back fully healed. Uh, things became complicated between Kelbrix and Jayella. They took a long rest inside of a tomb. They discovered that the tomb had been raided. Ah. They have completed the long rest. They have leveled up, which we touched base in the last episode a little bit. And now they have awakened from their long rest, fully healed, spelled, and ready to make decisions. So I ask, what are the decisions? What do you guys want to do? Let's get out of here. Yeah, That's let's get good. out of here. <laughs> I'll need in your sass, Jayla. <laughs> hey, you know, it's one less love interest for Kelbrix now. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, yeah. Shall we leave? Yes. <laughs> so our heroes will take those twisting, winding hallways, making their way back to... Attacked. There you go. Yep, out the hallway. <laughs> I'll just keep navigating. Well, Brian, you know, go ahead. You earn your keep, man. Navigate. Oh. <laughs> Can't do it all. Navigate. Only oh, 90%. I gotta there. get the torch. Oh, and don't forget the torch. I'm not forgetting that torch. We're keeping that yeah. torch. <laughs> and you'll navigate down the long hallway, around the turn there, coming back to the beholder room, and continue around, making your way back towards the fork in the road. As you come back to the fork where the floating magical blue stone is and begin making your way. You know, there's that portal. Ow. Be Wait, quiet. what? There's a portal in that room back there. No. <laughs> no, the one that um, Jael is mad because you tried pulling her through. Yeah, because I didn't want to die. <laughs> well, go jump through it. I mean, you have jumped through it. You go jump through it. It was your idea to try to pull us into it. Like, it's going to do something. Pokemon who wanted to go through it in the first place. No. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. Are, are you are you wanting to go? No. Nah, it's fine. I just thought I'd mention it again. <laughs> See if, what if, if anyone else wanted to go play in it. As our party gets back <laughs> to the door. Hang on, the door's still locked. Quit. That's right. Quit. We're only going through the portal. Yes, the door is locked. I have the cylinder. You, you do. Can I try and ding it on the door? You can. And you can add that to your inventory. That is actually a time of opening, I think is what it's called. Or mm-hmm. I wrote it down. I'm not sure it did. I think it's a time of opening. And take a look at what it does. I'm assuming you would have taken a look at it during maybe a light watch or something or studied it. Yes. For, yes, chime of opening. It's a wondrous item. It is. It'll load. Does, does everybody know what it is? No. I, I actually don't. Oh, it's I've because not. I've probably never pulled this one out in any of my other games, my yeah. old games. So the chime of opening literally can be struck 
kind of like a tuning fork. It emanates a like beautiful tone or a specific tone, and that tone will unlock most everything. It's like a key to unlock thing. There are limitations to it that are stated in there. There's tons of charges. Yes, there are charges, which you've used one currently, so keep track of that. I think they reset at dawn or long rest. Or time can be used ten times. After the tenth time, it cracks and becomes useless. Do oh, well, there you go. So you only got ten charges total. So you've used it twice. Twice? Use it in the room when you were fighting over it mm-hmm. to get out of the shadow room, and then if you use it now, mm-hmm. which I think you just did, is twice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You also could have used it to get out of the power room. I think. You also, fun fact, just because I'm that kind of person, you could have used the Eye of the Beholder to take away the ability of the Stone Golems. Ooh! Yeah. yeah anyway, good thing we didn't have fun that. fact, I'm sure somebody will be like, yo, you suck. Anyway. No, I, I kind of figured that, to be honest, I was wondering. And that's why I said, like, oh, hey, you know, hmm. A uh, no magic zone that we can carry around with us. So, striking the chime, it'll open the door, and you'll be able to get out. The door will close behind. The remnants of your battle with the... Um, these are... Carrion, carrion Crawlers. For those of you listening or viewing, the centipede-like creatures. Classic D&D monster. They are still there. They have not moved, thankfully. The corpses of the few under the raven. Uh, yep, they are still there as well. You guys will make yourself out to the thunderous boom and sound of the waterfall as you have made your way to the cove behind the, the Devil's Cove waterfall. Yay. And you still have the torch. Yep, still got the torch. It's there. Okay. So traveling and navigating yourself all the way back out to where this all began. You left with the conundrum or directions. Are you going... Where's your next course of action? Because everyone knows. Does it continue the other way? It appears to. It does. So, I don't know, one. Continue wrapping around. So our players are currently going the opposite direction in which they entered currently. Kind of exploring. You can. <laughs> Yeah, you can clearly see yeah. the pathway kind of weaves and makes its way going down, much like the, when you came from the other side, you worked your way up, it's level, and then when you kind of go around the second bend past where you guys are at, it'll go down to the water lines. It was like a more well, narrow It path is a little up, more yes. narrow, and on top of it, it doesn't lead back up into the village. Yeah, it like leads into the town. Yeah, I mean, if we want to go for a swim in the through the river, I mean, not particularly. <laughs> you never know. We, we might. Yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> we might come across some more marrow. <laughs> <laughs> and hey, you know, we could spend an hour in there, and you could attune to your <laughs> trident. Yeah, hey, yeah. Nice. Uh, unattuned to one of yeah. my rings. Yeah. Let's you tell you what. For you, go ahead and tell us what the trident oh, does. Sure. Obviously, Ari won't know until she attunes, but I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Both Brian and Jason and our listeners and viewers are very curious as what this okay. trident of the River King is. Well, it is a very rare trident, and it requires attainment by... That's worded weirdly. Okay. Probably. I wrote it. Um, <laughs> it must be attuned underwater for 30 minutes and will only work in the water it was attuned in. And... <laughs> The trident can be reattuned in another source to regain its functionality. So, so what that means, like if you attune to it in a pond, that particular pond is where it's going to be effective. Yes. Or a river, or an ocean, or whatever. And I think you can reattune to it in different water sources. So it's but got it's, four charges, so it's got Conjure Elemental, which takes two charges, Water Breathing, which takes one charge, Water Walk, which takes one charge, Tidal Wave takes two charges, and Wall of Water takes two charges. Yeah. And it is a throne and versatile weapon. It's near seven feet in length. Uh, and this one says five prong spearhead. I believe you told me it was three pronged. Four. So, 
Sure. Whichever you would prefer. <laughs> I would prefer the original description. I think it was four pronged. Three. I have three pronged. Okay. Three pronged it is. Hey. <laughs> three pronged makes it an actual trident. There you four go. Four would be a you quadent have... and five oh, would be a quintent, I think, or something like there that. There you go. How do you know that? I don't even want to know. Because the prefix try means three. Can we move <laughs> along <laughs> and figure out what we're trying to do? Also Aquaman. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Alright, we'll go back the way we came. Going back the way that you came, okay. Yeah. Get into a nice line. Yep. Getting good. Good. Um, before we go too far, can I try to hide this rock on Kelprix? <laughs> like without him knowing it? Yes. Yeah, sure. <laughs> that would be a sleight of hand. <laughs> Definitely do that. That is a 17 plus 14 for. Yeah, that. No, I, I have no idea. What's the number? We'll need to know that. 21. 31? Keep notes of that. The 31 <laughs> is the sleight of hand number, and it will also. I'm going to incorporate it as the. Go ahead and make a high check, too. Uh, what? That'll be stealth. Okay. 22. 13 and 9. So 22 is the number we need to worry about, not necessarily sleight of hand. Sleight of hand would have been placing it on him. He is completely oblivious. 22 is how well it's hidden or stealthed on him. That's going to be the number if anybody finds it or searches it or whatever. If they beat a 22, then they will find it. Okay. You guys will need to make some athletics or acrobatics checks once you get down to the bottom if you wish to navigate the way you entered in, kind of like hugging close to the wall. I mean, you can always dive into the water and try to swim under the waterfalls, but that's probably not going to happen. Or not do that. I mean, if you had a trident, that was, you know, <laughs> a give you things like <laughs> part the waters and shit. <laughs> Love the grunts and the facial expressions. Oh. <laughs> okay, I need to roll for Jayla. Jayla is amazing. 15 plus number. <laughs> she will choose. Okay, she'll go with athletics, so that makes her an 18. All right, what's everybody's number? 19 and 6 acrobatics for 25. That's good. Uh, eight for athletics, five plus three. <laughs> Fifteen. <laughs> Seven and eight. So as described before, when you guys nearly drowned a couple of episodes back, teamwork pays off. You will all kind of help Kelbrix not die. As I was hiding in on him, I just like helped him back. <laughs> little boots, like like a little parent to a child. Here, just put my stay, hand on you. Stay yeah. on the path. Stay on the path. Yeah. Use the rocks, not there the water. Okay. Yeah, you guys will navigate. Let me do a quick map change. Now, this map is finicky, as we've seen in previous past, as it will not want to load. Well, it, it did for loaded. you, but not for me. It's giving me fits. I will hmm. reload uh, so I can see what the f I'm doing. And, okay, now I can see all things. Now. You all will find yourselves back into Silt Town on the riverbanks with the pathway leading up the hill that kind of navigates uh, the land above and, and kind of behind the Devil's Cove Falls. And at this point, I'd like to know point of direction. Where are you heading to? What are you doing? We still have the map. That Ari's brother gave us the copy of the map. Yes, <clears throat> yes, you do. Would you like to see it? Yes. I have to move to get it. So sorry. <laughs> God, I really have to move. <laughs> Too many props. I can't keep them all on my little station. It's not big enough. <laughs> I have little spots. I squirrel them away. What is everybody else doing as Ari is pulling the map out and examining it? Are you 
kind of all haul around her looking at the map. Are you doing anything else? Oh, I'm skipping rocks. Oh. Okay, go ahead and give me an athletics check. <laughs> skipping rocks <laughs> on the water. Uh, 13. Oh, yeah, easy enough. You'll find a couple rocks and you'll amuse yourself. A you, couple good skips. Find some good skipping stones. Kelbricks. Um, You're probably modifying your character. I am, yeah. Right. I, I think <laughs> I screwed it. You had a whole week, Brian. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but I just realized I might have screwed a few things up. No. no. Well, okay. One thing. Well, Apparently as one you is. are studying your life choices and trying to figure out the pathways you really wish to take, getting yourself attuned and right with your new choices. Ari is looking at the map. Ari, you have the highest passive perception. You are going to hear what sounds like horses, a lot of horses, emanating from the north of you. Lovely. Yes. Turn. Try to see what it is. Uh, you can. That is what you see. You see eight horses with riders. <gasps> see, nothing. Nope. You're the only one that spots it. <laughs> Currently. Uh, you will see three people of magical means, it looks like. They look dressed like a typical kind of magic user or wizard, little flourish here and there. Uh, there is a Sendra who is literally bound with um, rope and manacles. <laughs> She has been beaten. She looks rough. She's hanging on to consciousness. She's just kind of like teetering back and forth on the saddle of the horse she was riding. You also see two religious figures scratching that. Two lower level religious figures. One high up religious figure in which you guys have met before. And you also see somebody you really don't want to see. That would be the Battle Baroness. Who is riding fully armed and geared. <laughs> and they're heading down to the bottom of the banks where you currently are. Your keen eyesight has picked them up before they have picked you up, but you've got a matter of seconds to determine what you want to do. Guys, we need to move now. Back behind the falls. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cinder's uh, tied up up there, and um, some guards are coming, so we need to go now. <laughs> Kelbox, you can take a look, and you can see that one of which is the high priestess uh, that you had met before who kind of created the troubles, uh, Isabel. Uh, you also see a couple soul shepherds that are traveling with her. You will see a lady you've never seen before, I don't think. Nope. nope. And you will see three other people that are kind of surrounding or riding accompanying Sendra, and you're pretty sure there's some type of arcanist. Okay, um, oh, shit. Sure. Okay. Gorath, you throw yeah. your last stone, your uh, attention yeah. is drawn. I'll hide behind a waterfall with them. And Jayela immediately is going to comply like, I do not want to be found by them. <laughs> That's right, I said it, you can insight check. I saw your eyes! I saw, yeah. I do not want to be found by them buy them? That's what you heard, and I saw your eyes, so yeah, you can make an insight check on that. Uh, that's eight plus something, I think plus six. Let me verify. I'll go with just a minute. Uh, yes, eight plus six for 14. Yeah, so her, your DC would be 11. Okay. Yeah. There's something she hasn't been entirely forthcoming with. <laughs> Secrets. She does not want to be anything to do with what she saw. So she complies immediately and starts beginning to move and push people to hurry up. Okay, we will, Jesus Christ, run back along the one pathway, a single solo, <laughs> solitary pathway behind the falls. So that is going to be a, another athletics or acrobatics check to maneuver behind Great. the falls. Okay. Now 26. Okay, way to brag. <laughs> <laughs> you could not wait to say that. No one was saying anything. Okay, okay. For me. I got a 10. <laughs> Just 10's good. What was your brag? 15. That's good. 
Yeah, you guys will maneuver back underneath there. I don't necessarily want to make a map change, so we'll just kind of put you near the falls. Okay. They will eventually ride. I'm assuming you guys are going to play and look out and see what this is going on. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, they're going to ride down here. You're going to hear one of the people in the group of uh, magic users, which you've identified as Arcanist. One of them will step off of the horse, and the horse is a smaller horse because it is a female dwarf who seems to be the highest ranking of the Arcanist. She would be a weaver. So she is the same kind of level of skill set as your associate, we'll call him, um, Weaver Alice. Mm -hmm. As she is going to look and say, they have to be here. I notice they have to be here. She told me that one of them carries a weapon. She described the weapon. I will use the locate object spell to locate said object. Which you guys really can't hear that because the waterfalls is deafening. So I ask what you want to do under the waterfall. Great. Oh. You know, the weapon the center gave you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, dude, I've had this plan. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. I've got other options. That was just one more. <clears throat> I mean, at this point, I guess probably stay here, hoping they don't come this way. Ari, I'm leaving this up to you, Ari. You're the I one that say decided we to book it to the other side. Keep going around. <laughs> okay. Okay, yeah. that works. We'll keep going around to the <laughs> other side. Trying to move yeah. around. Yeah, no back. problem. Are you moving cautiously or are you guys like moving quickly? The pathway is pretty narrow if you're gonna like double time it. Cautiously. You so can't no. move cautious oh. fast. You can't do that. That's like sneaking running. It just doesn't work. Oh, it does. Worse. I mean, come on. You're a ninja. Be <laughs> you uh, guys are not ninja class. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> okay. I would I like athletics, eight or better will get you across in a pretty good sprint or ride. Or jog. We'll do a group, so as long as the majority of the group does okay. <laughs> oh, she's good. You 19. Okay. 13. Yep. 10. That's good. You guys will jog, avoiding any complications, making it all the way around to the other side of the falls. Now. The pathway on this is, is it almost dies into the water. It's more, if you remember correctly, I'm pretty sure this is more of a, kill <laughs> or, or I said free base. Yeah. <laughs> it's more free, like free climbing. climbing. Yeah. yeah, out of the, out of this. Yeah. Um, amazing. <laughs> Going for it. Will they be able to see us? <laughs> Probably. It's a good chance. But it's a risk you may want to take. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, we only know who some of those people are. Only one of us knows who the other person is who's not divulging any information. She's not going to do it right now while we're I... running. <laughs> I'll be like, there's that portal. Unless <laughs> we want to climb. <laughs> no. No portal. Uh, let's climb, and then I'm going to look to Jael and say, then we need to have a discussion. Oh. About what? Oh. <laughs> Why you don't want to be seen by the other soul shepherds? It's probably the same reason you, you guys don't want to be seen by the other peoples. Who's that other girl who's been beaten on the horseback? That is Syndra. Oh. We're going to save her. We need to have a conversation. Just kidding. <laughs> How about conversate later? Climb now. <laughs> are, we, are we climbing? <laughs> We're climbing. We're climbing. free base climbing. Free, free climbing. climbing, apparently. Hey. All right. Athletics. All right. Give me one, one second. Acrobatics. Let me check something. Athletics or acrobatics? Yeah. You yes. could use acrobatics. All right. What's everybody got? 17. Okay. 19. Okay. 13 and 6. Shit. 20. Nice. Okay. Athletic 17 plus 3. Everyone rolls above the DC. It's going to take some time. One check is all you need because we're not trying to bog it down with roll after roll after roll. It's going to take you 
several minutes to climb, but you will be able to climb out. You make it up to the top. I'm gonna roll a perception with advantage. Okay. Uh, it, you just moved it. There, there's. Okay. It's in the houses. Um, okay. You will look back and you will see one particular individual that most of you don't know, but she's armored up and she's going to point and yell something. You hear that there's vocal tone, but you can't make out what it is over the falls and the distance. But pointing to the, towards us. Yeah. Okay. And okay. they are going to immediately turn their horses and spur them and start to charge back up the pathway. They're on horseback, you're on foot. Okay. Across the footbridge? <laughs> yeah. Across, across the footbridge. Across that. <laughs> no, they can't. That's the reason why we had right. to take the so other bridge guys, so many times. You guys can move at 30. So make sure you move for 30. They can move. And are you going to dash across that footbridge? Uh, no, this the footbridge is well worn. Okay, so they will be able to move. I don't know why, but they can move at eighty because the horses move at forty. So that's technically seventy-five. I can't move anymore. So I think it's set up wonky. So you guys have run to that point to the bridge. They are going to continue to ride. They will dash on their horses. So you guys can move an additional 30 feet. Okay. Now they will dash again. I mean, we're on the bridge at least. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Move an additional 30 feet. Okay. Just two squares. Yeah. Now they've moved 75, so I'm going to do a large turn because they can definitely move 80. So I'm going to move 90 this turn because they missed a couple. By like 15 feet, so they'll be all right. So now they are there on their dash. You guys can move an additional 30. Nope. 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 Don't go that way. I'm trying. For those of you listening, it's a visual again, a but they are s- okay. our heroes are essentially on foot trying to escape going across the people mover mm-hmm. bridge uh, that was uh, set up in there because mm-hmm. they don't have the fast passes anymore. Um, as the horseback riders with all the people that seemingly are chasing down our heroes are dashing on a pathway trying to catch up. Fortunately, they're not. They're within visual. They can see them, but they cannot catch or cross this bridge because it's too narrow. Can you you guys have moved your thirty. Yes. Yes. Okay. So here's what's going on. Now. They're right here. Yeah. They're gonna dash. Here. So you guys can move your thirty again. It's turning into cat and mouse. again they dashed again and once you get off that bridge you should be able to dash if you'd like to getting close and that was our 30 feet of movement yep, yep. okay so they are going to now move at 90 since that was that and they are going to dismount horses So they dismount from their horses and you are going to hear a booming voice carry across that's loud enough and audible enough because it goes like, what is that? Is it precedentation or no, it's a thaumaturgy. Thaumaturgy. Yeah. It's going to boom across telling you to stop and it's going to be in a dwarven voice. 
which causes Gorath's <clears throat> senses to tingle. And it's enough to cause you to look back, and when you do, you can see that they have Syndra, and they kind of are dang, uh, dangling her over said cliffside. Oh. And they... The dwarven female will say, if you do not wish harm to, to her to happen, then you will come back to us so that we can have a conversation. Now, up to you guys whether you stop or not. That's just what happens. Kind of dash. Um, I could tell you also that once all this happens, these magic users have their wands at the ready. So they will prepare themselves in case you do something crazy. That works. He still acted. Both of his characters should be the last one. We, we gotta, yeah. Um, something happened and apparently my... Um, I gotta find out. I had proficiency with um, perception, but it's gone now, and I have no idea what it was. So, yeah, it is what it is. Um, <clears throat> fuck. Okay. Let's. Fair enough. <laughs> let's, um. Let's go. We can't leave Cinder. She's part of the team. Do you realize if we go back there, we are. Walking into whatever they want us to. Yes, I do realize that. We are going to be in jail, possibly executed, <laughs> which is going to lead us nowhere. Mm, very true. What do you suggest? I don't know. <laughs> let the leash that they have on Cinder because she was bound out six inches so it turns into Cinder's fear planted at the edge of this kind of cliff facing near the cove the falls and it's like six inches to the feet are planted and she leans a couple degrees looking over the water below now based off the general topography yeah I used a big word of <laughs> said cliff yeah, it's not going to be a free fall of the water. There could be some bouncing on some rocks before you get to the water because it's kind of jagged and, and things like that. Just yeah, let's keep it. What about your new god friend? <laughs> well, I'd say let's go across and see what happens. Okay. <laughs> The others are currently no. coming around uh, anyway. Yeah. And they're going to cut us off yeah, before we can get to our That horses. group is still moving as you guys are kind of yeah. saving like yeah. They're still riding. We know. Okay. For the listeners to see now. Try to keep things evolving. Fine. Jaila, you don't have to be a part of this. Good. She but. stands there. off the bridge. Oh. I'll take the lead going back across the bridge. Okay. We have ourselves a typical Gareth. doom situation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gorath, Ari, are you coming? Unfortunately. Yep, I'll follow. Okay. As you will make your way out, walking back across the people in the bridge that is kind of swaying and creaking over the long fall into the Cillian River, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you will get about halfway, another 30 feet or whatever, it's roughly about that. As they see good faith, the dwarf will bring back in. Sendra and kind of push her back to another one of the uh, Arcanist or magic users accompanying the riders. Awesome. 
Yeah. Fine, let's talk. <laughs> they will... They will back up, giving you enough space to cover all from the bridge and taking Syndra away from the edge. So it'll be kind of a pivotal showing of good faith. So as you approach, Kelbrook should be the first to see. You could now get a good look. Syndra has been like beaten to the point of... You want to stay on the bridge? Okay. Go right. I'll see her. Yeah, I'll get it. I'll get off right there with you. You can see what face the tactic, the what has been done, is dwarf. they've basically <laughs> kind of kept her at one HP for whatever yeah. reason. So as she starts to naturally heal, they would kind of keep her so that she, if she was to attempt to escape, you know, one good shot would be all it took to, to end it. So she's a little rough, you know, swollen, beaten, bruised, etc. And she's been kind of kept in check. The dwarven female is going to say now. It seems my madness. I, she's going to introduce herself so you guys have her name, hmm. am Weaver Belma Hammershield of Clan Hammershield. Hey, Gorath, go ahead and roll me a history check on that, please. 17. 17 is really good. The name Hammer Shield, it sounds really familiar to you. Everyone else, it just sounds like a Dwarven clan name. It seems that your friend here, as well as another associate of hers and what sounds like yours, a Weaver Albus, if I'm stating that correctly, have been undertaking some illicit business, dabbling in magical items and things, which is illegal, is what she says. I ask that you turn yourselves over for judgment or to be judged in a court of law in Landgate and turn over all your magical items so that they may be assessed, categorized, taken away if need be, or returned to you if not needed. Your friend will be turned free. And what um, illicit activities have they been accused of? What proof do you have of this? Through our interrogations, both persons being Weaver or former Weaver Albus, as well as former, uh, she was a threader arcanist, threader Sendra. Let me use my words. <laughs> that you or they or all of the above have been dabbling in things revolving or involving artifacts known as the Faust artifacts that are known uh, to bring great danger to our world. Oh, so you, you mean uh, <clears throat> attempting to prevent a magical artifact as such from being used in the world to cause chaos. I believe that is the exact yes, purpose but- of the Arcanist. Yes, but you just yes, but, uh, said that right there. The Arcanist. It's not to be dabbled with with oh. you. And they were under no orders whatsoever to undertake this. Well, I would imagine that a individual such as yourself can understand that individuals may not like artifacts like these being out there while you sit on your pompous ass torturing individuals that would prevent <laughs> an artifact like this from being used. What what steps have you taken, you and the rest of the Arcanists taken, to prevent this item from being used? To find it and lock it away, as is your way. 
and as is your right. Oh, but of course, no, you haven't done anything. Instead, you have let the call of the raven out in this world with possession of such an artifact, and their intention is to use it to cause chaos, which is what we have been trying to prevent. Now, you sitting in your ivory towers, doing nothing. I'd say um, you might be under orders from somebody who honestly does not have the intention of capturing such an artifact. And what do you mean by that, is what she <clears> says. <throat> well, now, before you go any further, Korath, you're 17. It clicks in. There is a significantly large clan that resides in the Demon Spine Mountains that goes by, or is called, the Hammer Shield Clan. They are not too far and residing, their, their clan is not too far residing from your former home that was destroyed. Continue on with you, what you were saying, Brian. <clears throat> or Kelbergs. Well, <clears throat> this is a... Uh, this is an issue of... You don't know all of the information. You see, we've been discovering, as we've been trying to trace this artifact down, that there is a high probability that an arcanist within your organization is corrupted and is in fact the one who ordered the transportation of this artifact in order for it to fall into the wrong hands. And what evidence do you have to back that up? That's what she says. Well, we know that there's been a lot of infighting within the organization. And I'm going to pull out the journal. Oh, what journal? <clears throat> the uh, Journal of uh, Bristol Ironclad. Okay. Because that has a and lot where of did you acquire that item, is what she'll say. Oh, again, uh, by doing what the Arcanists failed to do and could not do. We have taken steps, as I said, to do your job for you. So her entire demeanor during this time is, for the players and for the listeners and everything else, it, it's a healthy kind of spar of words. There's there's, uh, how do I put this? There's a very open, optimistic, like, this. she's genuinely listening to what you have to say. It's not like she's closed-minded and she knows everything she's saying right. So that's that's a, that's a plus. Like, that is a plus. You know, literally, she's hearing you out, not just condemning you. So I just want to clarify that. Regardless of your words or what you have to say, it is not within your jurisdiction or your right to make these decisions. It is amongst the Royal Syndicate, the Arcanists, and other factions and powers to be to make these ultimate decisions. There were things in play that you yourselves, cl claiming to do the right thing, do not understand why they have taken place. Do not know what the ultimate goal or plan was how we may or may not have used said artifact to draw certain things out. You're right, the Call of the Raven are a little bit more than we suspected and we underestimated them, and they are definitely on our radar. But I think that you're wrong in assuming that you're the only one to solve the problem, that we're not doing anything about this. I think the problem is, is you don't get to see what it is that we are doing to protect the people from what they think they know. Now, Ari, you are going to hear behind talking. So you can center our map up a little bit so our viewers can see as Jayella is on the other side with her hands in the air. And she looks extremely scared as two of the soul shepherds will get off and surround her. Isabel will dismount her horse and starting across the bridge is going to be this honored individual and she is determined as she stares daggers into you as she is coming across that bridge. 
back to the conversation at hand, Weaver Hammershill is going to say, we just want justice, fair trial, and everything that is due process and law in here in Alteratus. We do not wish to see anyone harmed. We do not want to interfere with what's right or wrong. We are just following our orders and what we are supposed to do. We ask that you come peacefully and comply so that we can sort this through through a court of laws, which you'll say. So you're getting a sense she's lawful neutral. Well, that sounds good and all. However, unfortunately, I don't believe that would be possible as, um, we have done nothing wrong. In your eyes, I'm sure you believe that. And unfortunately, in your courts, corruption is probably very, very well ingrained in there. At this point, the armored individual, the female, from Landgate, Bar- <laughs> Battle Baron March, I think is, is yeah. the name has made it halfway as she says, that one there is mine. Hey now, <laughs> let's calm down. And she is pointing towards Ari. <laughs> she will move 30 feet to get to the center. And as she does, there is an arrow that will fly up from the basin, somewhere about here. It will strike the people bridge right on like the handrail, it will split the ropes and I need to make a check. That's good enough for her to hold on, but the bridge is going to tip off to the right. Ari, right, you will need to make a dexterity saving throw to see if you can catch yourself. You're on landish, but it's still a sudden jostle. Let's, you know, the whole bridge kind of moves over. Uh, 19 and 6. Yeah, you're, you're fine. You stumble a little bit as people are pointing down to the basin. And from like the Arcanist and the Weaver are pointing down to the basin. Two of the Arcanists are going to cast something from their wands out of instinct. So they point their wands directly in the direction where the arrow came from here. And magic missiles will scream out. So there will be six magic missiles flying in that direction. Does everyone look, or do you guys wish to do something while there's this crazy distraction? That's all I want to know. I'll give you a five second countdown. Five, Mm -hmm. four. Sure. I guess we're running. (laughs) Three. We're committed to running. Two. Yes, but I'm going to also cast, I'm going to attempt to cast Banishment on the Weaver. Oh. Okay. So they have to make a DC 14 charisma save. Okay. Which look up. I'm sure, sure they're very good at as they, the maid. I, I think I have their statistics. I gotta look at my <clears> handmade <throat> stuff here. Uh, Brian, tell us about our Patreon while I'm doing this. <laughs> so yes, um, you can find us on patreon.com slash crit eating grin. On there, you will find ad-free episodes if you are a Patreon subscriber. You can also find some extra episodes, such as the backstory of Maui, and some episodes of Talking Crit, where the crew here sits around and discusses the horrible shenanigans that occurs like this in detail uh, to get a little more extra information and backstory. Yeah, that, okay, I'll take it from there. Uh, you said it was a wisdom, right? Uh, charisma. Okay, let me double check. Yeah. I rolled good. <laughs> I just want to write... Uh, oh, well, you know. What is, what is the DC? 14. Yeah, no, that's a 17. Yeah. So, not banished. And if you guys are running, I'd like for you guys to make a... I'm going to call this a athletics check. 
and we'll make it a group athletics check. And how I'm going to do this is maybe a little different. The DC is going to be 25, but it's not what you think. I'm going to add all your totals together and see if you can all, if your total numbers together can make it be 25. 10. Well, there's 10. 7. 17. 9. What's that add up to? <laughs> 26. 26. <laughs> so you guys will shove and push your ways through the crowd so you can move 30 feet. Go ahead and move your tokens 30 feet across the way. Is there a way for Goroth to grab Zendra? That, that was is the plan. Okay. You would be able to attempt to do so with a disadvantage, and we will call it a... Sh- what should we call this? Let's just make this an athletics. Damn it. That 20 on one and then 19 on the other. Oh, it's still good. It's still good. I, the DC was roughly 15 because in my brain, after they had pointed their wands to launch the magic missiles, you know, there was enough distraction to loosen any kind of grip. So you will acquire Sendra being able to kind of like throw over your shoulder. Yeah. You huh? guys can rush to the horses. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to mount these horses? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Why not? Just okay. Don't tell me bad about leaving Jaila. She'll be okay. <laughs> Hopefully. So as you guys will mount the horses, you will see as the Arcanists are going to turn back and like, oh no. Um, you're going to look and see that the Battle of Baroness Marsh is crawling across, so she'll move half her speed as she has kind of gathered composure across that bridge. I would like for each one of you now to make perception checks because you're all looking around. Sixteens will get it. At the basin, you will see a familiar individual peeking out from the rocks. <laughs> the fucking redskin <laughs> teeth. Of and course. He is going to blend into the rocks or dive into a tunnel or something. You just catch him as he disappears. But he's there. You also notice that the two soul shepherds have restrained and apprehended Jaella and are putting her on horseback. Looking across the way, staring directly at Kelbrix, is going to be High Priestess Isabel Gregor. Mm-hmm. Okay, I would like animal handling checks. As you are about to ride these horses that are not your own. <laughs> hey! Oh, yeah. And that 20 for 23. Oh, awesome. I had a 10. Okay. 13. Okay, that's great. Mm-hmm. 10 was the, was the mark. They're pretty easy. Not hard to do. I've ridden horses before. Okay, so you can move your group. I don't think you have control of the horse. And no, let me for you. Okay, there you should have it. You can move the horses. Are you dashing or are you just moving 40 feet? No, oh, dashing. dashing. Okay, so you move them. You can't move them 80 because of the way the map is. So 75 is close mm-hmm. enough. You guys will take off with said horses. Now, oh. with that being said, let me double check the Arcanist. They are going to have enough time to point their wands at you. Mm-hmm. So there may be my favorite spell ever coming flying at you, which I'm sure no one knows. Hmm. Why? <laughs> You know what? When I built these, they may not even have it. And now that I'm looking... <laughs> well, they, may they have wands of magic missile, of Maybe course. All of their charges, though, trying to stupidly uh, attack. The, uh, you're, not, you're not wrong. I, there was a, a ton of, of, of missiles, or the, the six missiles that went that way. Um, but they do have other things at their disposal. They need to also have control of Cinder's token. Yeah, I'm sorry. You're uh, good. Let me do that real quick. Uh, they are 
actually going to do a... What's the range on the person? <laughs> mm, sure. Let's go trade him in. range is approximately 60, 60. They are going to turn and point their wands. They both will cast and waste a spell slot as you guys will pull out of range um, just in time before they're able to cast it. Now the Weaver is going to let me go back to the page with the Weaver. They are going to do something. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Take a look here. What they got. Is this time we're on podcast in silence? <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> uh, they, are act they, they do have magic missiles, so they will cast magic missile. <sighs> they will cast magic missile, etc. Because Cinder only has statistically two HP. Uh, Six. Uh, the ten plus three. Thirteen. So Cinder is out and dying during the process, but you still have control of her. As the missiles will fly. Okay. That's. Easy enough. Yep. If there anything, what do you guys want to do now? It's not technically an initiative. I mean, you guys are kind of pulling away. <laughs> so cast cure wounds on Zendra. Okay. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Go ahead and do that. And then if you guys are going to ride on, go ahead and give me another animal handling check. I actually have to roll it for once. Hmm. Hey, that worked out. She'll get eleven HP back. I okay. rolled an eight. So she is healed. You guys can. What are your numbers? Your animal handling numbers. Six. <laughs> Fifteen. Oh, that's good. Twenty-three. Oh. Arya is struggling. <laughs> it's Arya on a horse. Horses <laughs> <that's> struggling. Horses. <laughs> so you're actually going to move slower. So back yourself up about ten feet. Yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> But they are going to take off rushing, and mathematically speaking, you guys will be able to outrun them on horseback. Mm -hmm. So, because I don't want to dwell too long, because we're probably getting close for time. We're probably sitting close to an hour, getting close to it. Yeah. Um, the Battle Baroness is going to limp across the bridge. The Weaver is going to stay there to help her across. You will be able to describe or tell the listeners where you're heading on horseback because there's no there's no combat you guys are kind of free to run yeah. they're clearly not going to be able to catch you on foot so the next since Ari was looking at the map yeah. This all happened, yeah absolutely um, the next little thing we would need is in the mountains over here so if there's a way to get there from where we are currently, you're on the right side of the river and if you keep following the road the right the river. yeah you're going to just follow that out of town mm-hmm so it's whether or not we want to try and get our own horses back, or if we're just gonna keep going. I would like to try and get our horses back, but um, we could ride out of town, try to send the horses like further and hide mm -hmm. somewhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I mean, 
I think we definitely need to get out of town right now. Yeah. You think? Just, just maybe. Okay. Just maybe. maybe. So the plan is you guys will follow the pathway, take the, the side road there off the path, and then make your way north out of town, heading towards the other mark on the map, mm-hmm. which is the Demon's Gate, I'm pretty sure. Right. I wrote it. And you, they will not be able to catch up with you. You will be able to see that Jayella is taken on horseback and they are riding south or southwest in a southwest direction. They are going the opposite way you guys are going. And I'm pretty sure that is a good place for us to end this chapter of our tale. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching.